Did you know there's a new version of SQL CMD, this time based on Go? Learn all about it with Steve Jones in this episode of MVP Edition Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed MVP Edition. Today, I'm joined by Steve. Steve, thanks so much for finally coming on Data Exposed. We're super excited to have you. Why don't you kick us off by telling us a little bit about what you do? Sure, sure. Thank you very much for having me, Anna. So uh, I'm Steve Jones. I am, well, I've done a lot of things. I've been doing the database stuff for over 30 years. I've been a DBA. I've been a developer. I've managed those groups. Uh, I think what a lot of people know me from is I started SQL Server Central 20 years ago with fellow MVP Brian Knight and former MVP Andy Warren. And we tried to build this place where we could help you get better at, uh, you know, in your career using SQL Server, using the data platform every day. And so I've continued to do that. Uh, we founded SQL Saturday as well to try to bring that conference experience to the local area so we could help educate you. And the last uh, maybe 15 years, I've worked for Redgate Software as my day job. And they support me still with SQL Server Central, as well as trying to help our customers be better at DevOps and database deployments. Awesome. Cool. Well, it's great to have you on the show. And since you love helping users, it's a great place to be because we are always talking about new things and how to get started with them. And today is no exception. We're going to be talking about the new SQL CMD. So tell me more about what this is. Sure. So uh, I saw an announcement earlier this year that the, the tools team at Microsoft is working on a new version of SQL CMD. So for some of us, we've used SQL CMD for a lot of our career, it's a way to run scripts from the command line, uh, but it's been very limited. You know, it's an old system. And so there was this announcement you see on the screen from Jess Schultz, who's the program manager, that they had rewritten SQL CMD in Go, and they're trying to build a new, more modern, better way of working with the data platform on the command line. And so that's really what it is. Cool. Yeah. No, I, I'm excited about this. I've gotten to play around with it just a little bit. And from what I understand, you can with not that many commands do a lot of things. Um, love to learn more about it. Sure, sure. Let's dive in. Let me put my glasses on here so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, I've got a command line here, and let me just show you a quick demo. So this is nothing magic. Like in the past, many of us have run SQL CMD with all these parameters, like running a query. And you can see here that with the number of columns, while this is probably machine readable fairly well, this wraparound stuff gets a little bit hard to read. And for some of us, when we're trying to deal with an admin situation or we're trying to check something from the command line, this is difficult. But here's a new SQL CMD. They've actually added, in this case, a little formatting option. So if I'm in this backwards compatible mode, I get something that's a little more human readable. And nice. I think you'll agree, right? This is easy to see. Oh yeah, this is way better. <laughs> way better. But this is still just SQL CMD. So uh, if I were to come in here and just show you the help, when I've run just help, you'll notice all of a sudden this looks like a more modern Linux command where I can use two hyphens and use a word rather than just one character for a parameter. So it becomes a little more verbose, a little easier to understand. And because this is new, they're giving us a lot of feedback. You can see there's really two modes here. So there's a flags mode, which is compatible for the most part with the way SQL CMD has worked. And then there's this new command mode that gives me all of these commands that we see down here, which are a little more rich and full featured. And these are some of the things that might help us get a little bit better at working in the command line, which, which is what we need these days for DevOps. Yeah, for sure. So let me show you a couple other things, Anna, real quick while we're here. So I've just got these command files and I've actually put this in the GitHub repo so that you can follow along. But here I've run a config command with an endpoint command. And what this is essentially doing is giving me an address of a SQL server. In this case, I've given it a name, but it's just my local host. Mm -hmm. And then what I did was I ran a context command. And so this sets really a connection for me that I can use in my queries. So that in this case, I've just given it a name, I've called it default instance, and then I've given it that endpoint that I had up here in this other place. So now if I were to wanna run a query in this case, just so I don't have to type too much. I'll run this little query from a command file. All I've done is give it the query command and then the, that was my fault, the query I wanna run, and then it outputs this data back here. 
So that becomes simple for me to kind of run queries without trying to make sure I'm entering all these parameters at the command. Nice. Right. Which I think is, is much simpler for many of us that are, we're busy. We want to, once we've set a connection in Azure Data Studio Management Studio, we want it to just work. And now the same thing is on the command line. But that's not all. So let me show you something else. Let me clear my screen here and try to show you uh, something else. Uh, I can actually work with containers here. So in this case, I've run a command and probably should have run this through more, but this is just a get tags command. So this is going out to the Microsoft container registry and it's getting me a list of all the containers that are out there. And I'm sure, Anna, you've had the chance to work with some containers with SQL Server. Oh yeah, super fun. Super small and, and quick to deploy usually, which is a, a great selling point, I think. They absolutely are. So now let me deploy a container from the command line. So if you look here, I've just run the create with MSSQL, which is what I ran, but this time I'm gonna accept the EULA and it'll start downloading a container. Uh, I've already had already have this downloaded, but you can see it starts this up. It does some security work and sets a context for me from the command line. Wow. And it's put it on a new port. In this case, 1435 is the next one I have open. And then I've just run my SQL command query here and select, and it's actually worked. And just, just like I could do here, right? I could say query here, and I get the same thing back, right? Where it's downloaded the latest version for Microsoft that's running that. Wow, that's so cool. So in just like a couple seconds and one command, you basically created a SQL server and were I able to get connected and start using it. Absolutely did. And if I were to look at this here with my containers, you'll see that here's my container, that F4DA. That's actually what is up here is the name of this container. Nice. That's returned as a server name here. And we can see it was created, you know, like less than a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, just up a few seconds ago. Wow. But creating a container isn't everything we want to do, right? And if we're developing work and we often want to start with something, we don't want to just give you a blank SQL Server instance. So they've done a great job here uh, in giving us the option. So I'm going to gonna paste the command in here, but I don't want to run it. Let's clear this. Uh, well, I am running it, but let's stop it. So here I'm doing the create with the same thing. I ran this part earlier. But now I can do this using command. And what this would actually do is download AdventureWorks from the ak.ms URL, which is out on, uh, I believe it's on GitHub where it actually goes, but it would attach that. Now we don't want to watch that happen. Instead, what I actually want to do is I want to download it locally. So I've just set up a little node server here that's just running in a folder on my machine. So what I could actually do is instead of using that URL that goes out to the internet, I can use a local URL for me here running. And when I do this, it's going to, uh, works need correct URL, but now it's doing the same thing I just did. So it's starting up my container, it's creating another context for me. In this case, it's just giving it a, you know, MS SQL tube. Now it's restoring the database. Wow. So if we look here, it's downloaded that database, which was, the backup is very small. Then it's restoring it here. And we're now ready for client connections on a brand new port here. And in this case, I could run a version here and that would work. In this case, you'll see it's the same version, which is what we expect. But I could do things like I could change my context, okay? And then I'll actually just paste in this command so I don't have to type it. In this case, I'm now in a new database that's customized. And there's already a table and there's already data because that came from that backup. Wow. So this is one of those ways that as a developer, if I have these backups around, uh, especially if I have an internal web server or I set up something quick like this node server, I can customize that container where I want to start development, where I still want to start my work. That's super awesome. Yeah, because I mean, it's it's nice to see how you get, you know, the adventure work sample, but it's even nicer to see how quickly you can get whatever sample it is that you need to work with to do your actual work. Absolutely. I mean, and that was one of those big things when I talked to the team, there are, and if we pop out here to the announcement, there's actually some documentation on Microsoft Learn. And then there's a GitHub repo. So if you go to the go-sql CMD, there's a repo and you can open issues here that the team sees. Right? And one of those is that I want to be able to restore with a URL here as opposed to 
something else that I need to do. And so while we can go out to the internet with HTTP, I think it would be great as if we had a file URL that people could pull off their local network, uh, which would make development even start faster. Cool. Nice. Yeah. And it seems like, uh, seems like the team is actively working on this. So hopefully, you know, next time people come, they'll see more updates there as well. Hopefully they will. Uh, I'm looking forward to how they'll evolve this and please test it on your own environment, open some issues, uh, let them know what they can do to make this uh, the default SQL CMD that we all use. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Steve, for coming on the show. Like I learned a lot by watching the demo and seeing all the different things that you do, how easy it is to get started uh, on samples on the web or other samples that you might have locally. Um, any final tips and tricks for folks as they get started? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is th this is one of those skills that is really valuable for you to learn to work at the command line as opposed to the GUI, because all of the deployments, all the pipelines, a lot of the work that we're starting to do to become more efficient in pipe software requires that command line. So uh, I've got some articles in SQL Server Central I've written on this particular command, and I'm hopefully going to find some more or put some more out there in the next few months. I look forward to seeing what the rest of you can do as well. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Steve, for coming on the show. Uh, to our viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think of the new SQL CMD. Check out the links in the description to learn more, and we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed MVP Edition.